Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> okay. So next thing, let's do a list real quick. On roll twenty, in the upper right, click on the cog. And the first thing it says is display name. If you could change that to your character name. So that way we're not giving your real name out to the world. There we go. And so we have Celeste. Celestine or Celeste? Okay. Okay. So down in the bottom next to your name, you should see like a gray color square. You can change you can change that color. Hello? There we go. I forgot to press the button. <laughs> so down at the bottom you see your name. Um, next to it is like a gray square. You can pick that gray square and change yourself to a different color so you're both not gray. And what that does is it, yeah, you can change that to a different color. And that way, if you click on the screen, you can, yeah, you can pick a different color. There you go. So now when you click on the screen and hold it, it'll make a little ring. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so right now you're just, you're just going to see a black screen until I'm ready for you guys to see the next screen. I didn't make a big fancy intro page for this one. Okay, so let me get on the right screen there and change this. Okay. So it's a dark and stormy night. The rain is coming down upon your cloaks as both of you are traveling to the nearest inn to find shelter. Inside, you can hear merriment and rejoicing, and you decide to enter the bar. Let me change the music. Where is... There we go. Did I? Really? Oh, I'm sorry. I think my button. I think. I think my button's messed up. Oh. There we go. I think my button might be getting worn out. <laughs> okay, so you come up to an inn and you hear merriment inside, and you it's raining outside, and you seek shelter inside the inn. Inside, there's several patrons, and they're sitting around rejoicing. Um, multiple tables scattered about, and um, your typical bar scene. You have a bartender behind the bar, and um, there's a billboard on the wall. What do you do? Thomason Edwards III also known as Tommy, <laughs> is uh, he's going to go up to the bar. Uh, he's third. And as he walks up, he's going to sit there and be like, Oi, bartender, I locked myself into a rail. Bartender looks at you and says, Certainly. You don't sound like you're from around here, but that will be one silver piece. So where are you from? Well... Now from here, you're right about that, but, uh, you know, where I'm from is my own business, if you don't mind. Well, join in the merriment tonight, for tonight is the celebration, the one-year anniversary of my test of the rogues. Test of the rogues? 
Ah, the test of the rogues. I have a dungeon, if you will, below here. And if you can get to the end, you will win you will win fortunes. If I sound like I'm cutting up, it's just because uh my button is definitely worn out. Oh, okay. So as uh, as Tommy hears this, uh He's going to be pretty intrigued by it, and he's going to turn towards the door, and you just hear him go, Oi! Celestine! Come here and listen to this, bro! And I waltz over to his... to see what's going on. And when I do that, I also say, Bartender, give me something nice to drink. Smooth. I would that be water or a glass of milk? Because all we have here will make hair grow on your chest. Oh no. <laughs> Alright, just give me a beer. <laughs> so as he brings your drinks to you and you kind of people watch for a few minutes, you notice that the the tables where people are sitting at all have windows in the center of them. And they're sitting around and looking and cheering at the windows. There's a and there's a, a guy at the end of the bar. And he's he can't tell if he's quite drunk or if he's out of his mind. But he keeps whispering something, you can't tell what it is, over and over again. Alright, I'm gonna make a is uh, how packed is the uh, the room? It's well packed, but not so packed you can't walk around. Good, that's what I want to hear. I'm gonna make a stealth roll. Okay. And attempt to sneak up a little bit closer to see if I can hear what he's. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did. A nine. <laughs> Well, you're not quite hidden, but he isn't really trying to hide what he's saying. And he keeps saying, up, down, down, up, down, down. And that's all he keeps saying over and over again. Alright, I'm gonna speak to him. Boy, you sound like you've gone and lost all your marbles, man. What's wrong with you? That's the... That's the... Been downstairs. Up, down, down. Up, down, down. Up, down, down. Is that supposed to be some kind of code or something? With that, he kind of faints, like he's had too much to drink. Alright, I'll work back to uh, Celestine. And I ask you what's going on? Oh no, this old drunk bastard is over here all crazy like talking about up, up down, down, up, up, down, down, something. Couldn't make heads or tails, what are you? Hmm. Is he talking about stairs, maybe? Oh, I don't know. But uh, regardless, he's out now. You ain't getting no more from him. Maybe we should walk around the room and check out what people are doing. All right, I'm done with that. Uh, so we're going to kind of meander around the room and see what others are going to do. I'm going to roll. I want to see these tables with these windows in them. It's so funny because off off of the game for a minute. I was watching a drama the other day, and they had tables with windows in them too. But on the windows, they had screens, computer screens. It was weird. Right. Well, <laughs> the dice don't like me apparently. Yes, let's let Celestine roll for perception as she's looking at the tables. Actually, if you would roll an investigation. So the way you do that is you open your character sheet. Uh, let me get to your character sheet. Okay. You open your character sheet and down like the second uh, column, you'll see like 
uh, acrobatics, animal, ha animal handling, arcana, athletics. Go down until you see investigation, and when the word highlights, click on the word. Awesome. So, okay. yes, yeah, so anywhere on your character sheet where it highlights for you, you can click on that and roll a dice, and it'll do all your um, adjustments for you. Oh, your bonuses, cool. yes. You do that for like your weapons when you attack, like pretty much everything. Okay. Yes. I'm just gonna have to get to remember, and this is gonna be a while for I get this. Which one I've got to do? It's you okay. To... Yep, it's okay. <laughs> so investigation, you, you find a table that has two empty seats, and you just kind of mosey on up to the table, and you look down into the window. And it's kind of dark. You can see, um, like, torchlight flickering. But all of a sudden, you, you see... Hmm. Hold on, I'm going to change my push to talk. Hold on. I know. She said it was kind of dark, and th that was it. Okay, we'll try this key. I think I've worn my control key out. Too much smashing of the control. <laughs> uh, I use I use the uh, the little key right next to one. Oh, the tilde. Yeah. Careful, I turn your auto attack on. Auto attack? <laughs> Never mind. It might do that. It's a world of it's a world of Warcraft <laughs> reference. Yeah, I was gonna say it would do that my game. Okay, so let me start up again. So you you wander over to the table and um, you find two seats empty at a table, and you get up real close and look down into the window. And as you are looking down, you you see a flicker of torchlight, and what maybe is like a humanoid body, and then like you hear this growl and a, a gurgle, and blood splashes up and hits the window as everyone cheers and roars. That sounds almost like somebody's being tortured. <laughs> and Tommy's over there too? Correct. Yes. Okay. Did you see that, Tommy? That doesn't look good. Right. It looks like that old bloke got it in real good now, didn't he? There's something evil going on in this place. It's evil, I tell you. Evil. Right, well, not really none of my business as I see it, but if it's on your own conscience, I guess we can look into it a little bit. Shortly after, a small, short, uh, a small, short, a small <laughs> man kind of stands on one of the tables and everyone looks at him. He goes, who is next? Who will try to win our treasure? Who is up for the thieves' challenge? Treasure, they say? Oh, now they're speaking my kind of language. As I raise my hand. Oi! I'll take it right here, right now. And I grab him on the arm and I said, I wouldn't so fast if I were you. You don't know what, what they're asking of. Are you kidding me? They said they got treasure. What more do you need? Did you see what was in that window? No. Do you want to end up like that? Well, blimey, he won't even be able to see me to admit, for me to end up like that. If you're up for it, then I'll help you. So again, I raise my hand. Oi! I'll take your little chance right here, ain't none for me. I'll have that treasure in no time, I tell you. He looks over at you and, 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 and acknowledges and he takes his cane and points at you. There! There is our next contestants of our our 
show. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you get ushered. <laughs> yes, you get ushered to this big kind of uh, metal door in the back of the of the inn. See, I'm not sure what. It's a big metal door. Yes. As he opens the metal door, it opens. And you kind of get ushered inside. Not really shoved, but kind of pushed inside. It, it closes behind you, and you hear it lock in place. Now, you should both be able to see your tokens. Um, before you move your tokens, let me know that you found them. I, I have, I see. It's in the upper left, Mom. Fish attack. You see him, Mom? Mom? I'm trying to get this to move oh. right. It keeps moving around on me. Oh, no problem. So you side it with your wind, your sidebars on the side. In the upper right hand corner, in my screen at least, it has a little slider bar that moves, it zooms in and out. All right. Hello? Yeah, we're here. Oh, I didn't hear anything at first there for a minute. <laughs> Well, I, I turned I turned the music off so that way I can make sure you can hear what I'm saying. Um, so above your character's tokens, you should see your health bar. I have the health turned on so you guys can see each other how you're how you're doing. Um, just like a paper Dungeons and Dragons, you won't be able to see the monster rolls. Um, you know, you'll see that I'm rolling dice, but you won't see what the outcome is. And okay. yeah, go ahead. So we are up in the top left hand corner uh-huh okay so um so that's thing you are playing a character that has dark vision so you can see at a greater length but you only see in black and white as you are moving around you'll notice things will be black and white if you light a torch or something then it will turn into color but you can basically see in the dark uh, Tom Thomason is playing a human he cannot see past five feet in front of his face. It's so dark without a torch. All right, so I'm going to uh, whisper to Celestine. Hi, Celestine. If you uh, light a torch and walk forward, I'll be able to follow the light and stay in the dark. I think that'll work best for us in this situation. Watch it Justin. You're gonna to have to say that over again, cause I can't hear every word you said. Yeah, you got a little too quiet. <laughs> okay, I was trying to like actually whisper. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just a little, little, little okay. too quiet. So he's gonna to whisper to her. Hey, Celestine, if you light a torch and you walk ahead, then I'll be able to see, but still stay in the shadows. That's where I will do my best work. Now, don't you hear me? I think that would be work work best for our situation. Don't you think? Was that better? Yeah, I can hear you. Hmm. See, I could do that, or we could... I can still see in the dark, even though it's black and gr gray. White and, white and whatever, gray. Right. You can. I cannot. But if I go first, can you then see... Then I me? lose you, and I can't find out where you are. Okay. I guess then I'll <laughs> light a torch. And being a rogue, I work best in the shadows where I can sneak attack people. So if I have a torch that I'm carrying, that kind of negates all that. Trying to look to see. There you go. So I put a torch on your, on your character for you. Um, that's something I, I control on this side. Um, so I, I lit, I put a torch on your character and made it so he could see the torchlight. Um, you'll really see it when you start moving the tokens around. So your character has a movement speed 
of um, 30 feet. And I should go first? Yes. So your character has movement speed of 30 feet. Um, each of these squares is... 5 feet. So if you have 30 feet, don't go sp sprinting off a really huge long ways because then what would happen is the DM could possibly just be like, okay, well you just triggered five traps. So make short moves, proceed cautiously. Okay. Um... And you can move into the same square as somebody else. You just cannot stop in that square unless the other person is a halfling or a dwarf or a gnome. Let me see first here. I got to look at my, my I'm going to have to print out one of these sheets, this sheet of me, so I can kind of study it a little bit. <laughs> so I yeah. know everything so is. So what I would do is as you move forward, make sure you make a perception roll because that's going to let you know if there's trap or not. Perception. Okay, so I make a perception roll before I move, right? You can make it any time. So you have 30 feet. So you essentially you can move to the end of this hallway or three or four squares, do a perception roll. Um, out of combat, it's it's pretty free game of where you want to move. Just don't go crazy. Okay, so now when I move, do I move my character or do you move it? You move it. You should be able to grab a hold of it and move your token. There you go. And I'm going to make a perception roll. Okay. If I can get there. <laughs> you don't notice anything out of the ordinary. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and do a stealth roll. And hopefully the dice show me a little bit. <laughs> hopefully it likes you. There you go. Hey. I'm just trailing kind of behind, lagging, lagging behind a little bit, so I'm not directly in the light. Now her torch reaches about 30 feet, just so you know. So that means they could see my torch before I, before I see them. Well, you'll see them. Yeah, you can see 60 feet away from you. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to carefully look around the corner, see if I see anything. That mm -hmm. You make out some possible bodies down the, down the hallway into a room. Okay, then I'm going to proceed a little bit further. And I guess I better make another perception roll. Um, you don't have to make a lot of perception rolls. I'm not someone who does a lot of rolls. I think I think there's some things that you will have to roll for, but some you won't have to. So as you're coming down the hallway, you okay, notice... Gonna, then I won't. I'll just leave it right there. Yeah. As you come down the hallway, um, you can see um, light flickering off. Light flickering off to the... Uh, to the left of the room, and you can definitely make out a uh, woman's body uh, laying on the floor in front of you. I do what? Every time you go to click your person and move it, you always ping it. So as you move into that square, you hear like a click, and above you, you notice like little windows kind of spiral open. You can tell that those were the windows where the tables were. So you can see people looking down. Watching us. Yes. Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> I almost want to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> and then I say, Thomas, do you see that? See what? Up there. Up where? 
I can't see inside that room. I'm still back here. No, I'm talking corridor. about up ahead of. Is it up above us? It's above you in the room. So basically, he is too far back away from you. Yeah. Yes. And I should say, Thomas, where are you? <laughs> Get your butt back up corner. here. Get your butt up here. Why? There could be something up in there. Then I lose the element of surprise. You won't even walk in here. <laughs> There, oh, I move funny. forward a little bit. Is that any better for you? Well, uh, okay, fine. I'm going to walk <laughs> into the room. Oh, you stop it. <laughs> I love Lady Rhodes. And look around. <laughs> and look around. All right, you look around, and with your um oh, higher, man. with your higher perception, you can uh, make out a cobweb to your left with a really huge spider sitting on it. Um, it's playing with something, kind of like it's got got something. Entwined in its in its uh, in its web, and moving into the room, you also moving into the room, you also see that there's like uh, some skeletons about of corpses of people, and that there is also a gentleman dead on the right hand side. Yes. Holy moly! I'm going. It's hard for me to say Tommy. I think of my brother. <laughs> Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. What is it? There, we've got company. It's called a big spider. We'll kill it. Oh, gee. I don't know myself, what it is. I come in here to help you, and you turn around, and you want the treasure. Okay. Yeah. I'm moving forward a little bit for you. Is that any better? You're a scared rogue. <laughs> <laughs> My guy's a thief, not a killer. <laughs> he just I likes treasure. How big is this spider? The spider is the size of token, so each square is five foot by five foot. So this this spider is as big as you are. Oh jeez, it's five foot, five foot high, five foot across. Yep. Holy. Celestine. Have you killed it yet? No. Have you tried lighting it on fire? That might work. I'm trying to think of what my spells. Where are my spells? Are they same there? Oh, they're, they're over here. So a quick cheat sheet is um, you can um, hold on to left left shift and double click on your token. It will open your character sheet for you. And then you can go to your spells page. So I can hit what? You can hold onto your left shift key and double click on your token. Oh. You know, automatically open, jump up to your character sheet. So you don't have to go looking for it. Ah. Cool. Okay, so. When I go to do a spell, do I have to roll like an initiative or something? It depends on the spell. So what you would do, um, right now you're not in combat, technically, so if you casted um, a spell of some kind, you would basically get a bonus, you know, like, like you get the first strike before the actual combat started. Okay. Hmm, I'm wondering if I should do fire or... I guess I'd do fire. Would I do a fire bolt? I'm going to do a firebolt. Do I just click on that? Yeah, just click on firebolt. There you go. So what it's doing is, um, just to explain to you, you've casted firebolt. You roll a 23 and an 18. What it's doing is automatically... Uh, I think it's my connection. Okay. So basically you, you've casted firebolt. Okay. And that... As you can see, you have a 23 and an 18. What it's doing is this is rolling twice in case you have advantage or disadvantage. And in this case, you would have advantage because the spider hasn't noticed you yet. So you get the element of surprise. So you would pick well, the. Uh, uh, that's why I fired at it because I was so surprised I went, oof. <laughs> and so basically, since you have advantage, we're going to choose the bigger die roll, which is 23. Okay. Um, in that little window there that where it rolled the dice, 
Down at the bottom it says Firebolt plus four next to it. Click on the word click on the word Firebolt. And it'll give you your damage. There you go, so you do seven damage to it. But That doesn't sound very good. Hello? There we go. So, um, you have to remember that you're level 3 characters. These monsters are not going to have a lot of hit points of damage. So, 7 damage is a good roll. Oh, okay. Basically, your damage was, was a 1d10, and you rolled a 7. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, so now we're going to roll for initiative. Now, I have some cheat things. So, up in the upper right-hand corner, before the gear, you should see three dots with lines next to them. And uh -huh. If you click on that, it gives you macros. And I have made one to say P, Healing Potion, P, Initiative. Well, I, see I only one see the P initiative. Oh, just P initiative. Okay. Um, so next to P initiative, click in bar, and it should put it down at the bottom of the screen for you, like in the left hand corner. It'll be in the very bottom. bottom yeah. Left. Bottom left. Yes. You just click that mom and it'll roll your initiative for you. Oh, okay. Just make sure you select your token first every time. Okay, so now you can see a turn um, a turn order window. Whenever we're playing stuff, you'll when combat starts, you'll see everyone's roll here. And you'll know and you'll know when it's gonna be your turn. So uh, Thomason roll twenty one, so he gets to go first. Do I have to? I don't even know where the bloody thing is. And if I move forward, I lose my my stealth because of the torchlight. You can stay in place if you want to. You don't have to move. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna forego my turn. For All right, Celeste, it's your turn. And I roll. I have to roll a spell, right? For a spell. Yeah, you do a spell or a combat. You can um, move 30 feet, and then you can, in any, in any order, so you can move 30 feet, attack with your weapon, or cast a spell. Okay, so if I move, I can move first, then cast a spell. Correct. Um, that way, you know, your spells, your firebolt, for example, had a range of 120 feet, so you can make some distance between you and the spider. Just a little tidbit for you. If you move into the room more, I'll be able to edge my way in the semi-darkness. I hope I'm light. in the right spot. <laughs> and I'm going to fire. Um, gosh, first of all, I gotta. Okay, and I just wanted to make sure also, on your um, spell sheet, you're casting Firebolt, which is totally fine. Um, uh -huh. It's a cantrip, so you can cast these things all day long, it doesn't cost you anything. Okay, on, my, on those. Yes. Those, that spell. Yes. So you rolled a 10. Your Firebolt passes by the spider and misses it. Oh cool, look at that, the firebolt mist. It lurks forward. It's badly hurt, so it, it's, its movement is 
not as good as it used to be, missing many of its legs. I think I see it. Alright, Tavison, it's your turn. I'm gonna do more sneaky. Alright, how do I roll my sneak attack? Because I'm clicking it and it's not doing anything. Um, let me see your character. Or do I need to attack with my regular weapon first? Yeah, you just basically move and attack with your regular weapon and add the sneak attack stuff to it. Okay. I'm not going to move. This is fun for me because I don't get a chance to play with um, rogues very much. So. Bang. <laughs> you pull out your trusty short, board, sh short bow, the tickler, and fire an arrow at the spider and hitting it for. Eight piercing damage. And then what's the sneak attack? Unless he saw me, I mean, I should still be... You can still do it, but um, but when, as your arrow hits him, it sinks deep inside of him. As it, like, doesn't even stick out, the whole arrow just goes inside the spider, and it collapses dead on the floor. Oh, okay. Well, he's dead. Oh, we killed him. Cool. Tell us nothing. Is there any more of them in there? I look around. What do I see? Um, so you see in the um, you see you see the bodies, you see the dead spider now. Um, you see a torch hanging on the north wall, and um, on the large spider web in the upper left hand corner, there's a uh, mummified. Was it maybe possibly a person mummified up in the webs? And uh, the corridor to your right has some kind of spiky things coming from the wall. I don't think I want to go through there. I don't Is there see any Thomas. more spiders in there? <laughs> I don't see any, Thomas. Right. I knew it all along. I, I wasn't scared of anything at all. <laughs> Not one bit, I tell you. Alright, so what, uh, what corner had the uh, person in the... Uh, uh, upper left. Upper left. I'm going to go up there and I'm going to use my dagger to uh, try to cut him, cut the um, web, whatever surrounding him, open, so I can try to search his body, see what's going on. You cut. You begin to cut open the. Um, I don't know if I'm going to call it a cocoon, the webbing, and inside as you're cutting it down, slowly, slowly you find a young woman inside. She's half unconscious right now. Oi, tell us nothing. There's a bloody woman over here. <laughs> Holly, what did you know about that, huh? Oh, wow. Is she still alive? I don't know. I'm going to see if she has anything good on her. What do I need to roll to see if she's got anything good on <laughs> You could roll a, um, let's see, for pickpocket. You would, if she was conscious, you would roll for pickpocketing, but she's unconscious, so you won't really have to roll Maybe per se. Deception? No, um, I'm not a big person on rolling dice. Um, so you, so you kind of look her over, and she's wearing. You could tell after you pull her, she's wearing like fur, a fur protection over her armor. She's wearing a uh, shiny metal armor, and she has uh, a mace attached to her hip and a um, symbol of maybe what you've seen before in your past of a like goddess around her neck. Right. Uh, well, she don't seem like the kind of person you really want to mess with, so I'm just going to leave her be for you. Now this body uh, that's over by my mom's character, is that like an actual dead body in the room, or is that just cosmetics? You're talking about the bodies in the dead floor? Or the dead floor, <laughs> the dead bodies on the floor. <laughs> yeah. They're they're actually there, they're actually there. The dead rat's there too in the corner. All right. I'm gonna come over then and uh, we'll 
Or do you want me to roll for to see if there's anything? No. Um, you search his body and you find um, a couple a couple silver pieces um, and two daggers attached to his hip. All right. Found myself a couple pieces of silver and a couple daggers too. Oh, hold right, on, daggers. Here's a silver piece for you, Celestine. I'm gonna toss her. Thanks. Hey, you're welcome. That was a bang up job you did back there. Really appreciate it. All right, I guess it's uh, time to see if the woman's alive. <laughs> <laughs> She's definitely still breathing. I'm gonna kind of shake her. Hey, hey, lady. She opens her Come eyes. On. She opens her eyes and kind of coughs and gags as her body kind of twitches. It was paralyzed from the spider's bite. And you can tell her muscles are starting to like come back alive. And, um, and she coughs and she look, kind of looks around where um, at her surroundings and she's like, who, who are you? I throw up my hands and like kind of like lean backwards. Boy, don't you know that's rather of rude to be coughing in front of people's faces? I have no idea what you got. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. Just trying to catch my breath. I was poisoned by the spider. We was down here trying to defeat this and get the re the riches like everyone else. And she looks over and she sees the the bodies in the floor and she goes, "They were with me. We must have lost." Right, so you lost too. We took care of that big spider. Well, I do most of the work. My sister over there kind of helped me out a little bit. What is all? And I just kind of wave over at her. Yeah, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> you help her to her feet. And she looks around and she says, Well, I can't really leave here. You can't go back the way you came in. Do you mind if I join you? Why not? We could all use the extra muscle. You look like you can hold your own there. Sure. More well, than well, I What's your name? My name is Soliani. I'm a cleric. Nice to meet you. <laughs> My name's Thompson Edwards III, and I happen to be a very respectable businessman. Me and my associate here, we're going after this treasure as Now, I know that there's spikes on that wall, along that wall, down that ho corridor. But I'm going to go up to and look down <laughs> to see if I see anything. So this the spikes, you don't only, you know, you see blood and intestines and stuff on the floor. Uh, but the spikes are kind of like... They look like they're bone, but they're very sharp, but it seems that the hallway is breathing, like they're moving. Like it's alive. Correct. Can I see further past the spikes? You can see as far as your token can see. So at the end of the hall, you see a dead, it turns to the left. All right, I'm going to go over and uh, move over to see what Celestine's up. Hey, Thomas, look at this. The floor is breathing. Everything seems to be moving like it's alive. Right. Your name's Tommy. I'll forgive you that time. And that almost seemed right. Seems kind of uh, off putting, ain't it? Well, I've checked to see if there's. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> the last thing I think kind of was hard I to understand, you. I said, 
Have you checked to see if there's a trap on the, on the hallway? No, I haven't yet. Do I have that? Basically, oh, yeah, yeah, just roll perception. Now, when rolling perception and stuff, you also have to think about your character type. So, you are basically a cloth mage wizard throwing spells person, and your roles on stuff like finding traps and so forth are not as going to be as good as someone, say, a rogue who excels at um, things like that. So, you can still roll and but Tommy's character is going to be a little bit um, have a little bit more of an advantage right because he knows what he's looking for right I just wanted her to try that way she yeah. used to make it rules right I'm gonna try but I can't figure out she's that's fine Go to your character sheet, find that find that big uh, elongated um, rectangle that's next to your um, abilities. That's your skills. You find the perception, and it's all in alphabetical order, or it should be. Go to perception and click the word. Okay, well, my sheet all of a sudden changed on everything. Oh, there it is. Now it's... That was me. <laughs> Sorry. So oh. up, up in the right hand, under... Um... Right above personality traits, you wrote that paragraph. You see core, bio, and spells. Uh -huh. You can uh, core is, is this sheet right here, and if you go to spells, I'll click on it for you. You can see your spells you have. Uh. So I'll go back to core. There you go. Oh, and I was trying to figure out my perception, so I got to do that. Right, you're blind as a bat. Yep. Yeah. All right, let old Tommy step forward a little bit and see what he's got. There you go. You don't notice anything besides the walls are are moving, but they're breathing. Um, you can kind of tell from your experiences that there is a pattern to it. Celestine, I can't really see down this hallway too much. Can you stand behind me so I can see with the torch? Light? There you go, love. Thank you. I'm gonna try something, and I'm gonna have him walk up and grab the dead rat. And, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the dead rat and throw it into the hall and see how the hall reacts. Now are you going to throw it straight down the center of the hall or at an angle so it hits one of the spikes? In the center. You throw it down the center and it just kind of flies by, you know, just nothing happens to it. It misses the spikes. But you can tell that if you tried to walk down the hall, the spikes would be sticking into you because the rat's smaller. Right. Hmm. So, Lenny, <laughs> you want to do a little walk? Yes. <laughs> no, 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 I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> we need to go down this hole, wait. <laughs> You're <No>. quite mad. <laughs> I think we should try the other hallway first. Right. I think that'll be the better choice. Maybe if we give, uh, so Lenny the, uh, the torch, she might do a little bit better. Leaving the I'm gonna let Celestine have the torch and do her thing. So she can I learn. was gonna say she's more of a priest type thing, okay. a healer. Well, she yes, been, uh, she is a cleric. cleric. She is a cleric, and clerics in this game wear like full metal armor. Um, they are quite capable of having themselves in the front line, but they are healers as well. Oh yes, yes. It's not like a priest in World of Warcraft where you're wearing paper armor. <laughs> Think of a holy paladin. Okay, but I'm also thinking about 
we don't need to lose somebody who could do healing. Sounds thing. What was the matter? She was pretty much dead anyway. She owes us. <laughs> Why not have her risk her neck a little bit for us? <laughs> Let's go. Coming down the hallway, you see another body on the floor. Is it dead? <clears throat> it appears to look like it's dead. Why don't you go poke it? <laughs> <laughs> I walk over there and examine it. It is, it. um... You, you, uh, check him over. He is, he is, it's a man, and he's wearing, uh, full plate mill armor. There's footsteps that looks like it was leading to his body that were possibly his, where he was walking through a puddle of blood and collapsed there on the floor and died. Oh, I'm gonna push the top key. Puddle of blood? Yes. Puddle of blood, um, where he, uh, walked, walked through it and, um, collapsed there and died. So I'm going to check him and see if he has anything use on him that we could use or you check him what... you check him over and you find a potion of healing we need it but is there anything out of the ordinary on him I mean does he what looking to see what might have killed him it was uh, definitely like claw marks across his body I'll be right back. I'm going to get a drink of water. Okay. <laughs> so, while we're waiting for him, I guess I should go up just a little bit further and look around to see what I can see around. Just so I don't run into anything that I can't, you know, unexpectedly. Should I roll perception? If you would like to check for traps, yes. I guess I should since I'm first. I'm back. Okay. She is getting ready to make a perception roll to check to see if she sees any traps. You don't notice anything out of the ordinary. You definitely see um, a lot of blood smeared on the floor. Um, another dead body across the room. Um, kind of like his hand is on a chest. And um, in the right-hand corner, you see bags. What possibly could be like big giant flower bags. And another dead rat on the ground. Ah, okay. So, it, can I kind of like look around the corners to see anything, or is it not just just it? What's in the light? You can peek around, um, peek around the edges. You see um, what you would imagine that maybe it was once at one time this is where the inn maybe stored wine and stuff and this stuff is just all bad and rotted uh you see some uh big giant uh ale kegs and more just bags of deteriorated stuff and there's another body of a person off to the left uh, or off to your character's right i guess you would say move into the room. Okay. And look around. You don't really notice anything more than what you've uh, seen already. Just a lot of cobwebs. It was, <laughs> was probably for other spiders, possibly. Um, you do notice that the, um, the people up in the windows above your head or are watching anxiously to see what you are doing. 
just like to be watched. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go over to this body and check it to see if there's anything unusual about it or anything on it that we could use. Well, the the body, you, you seem to turn it over and that it looks like the body exploded from the inside out. It's a big hollow cavity. Ooh. And Thomas like and, aliens. Yeah, it's kind of like aliens. And Thomas then, uh, as Selene comes in the hallway, she stops and she stares at the uh, gentleman on the on the floor, the knight on the floor, and she collapses and she grabs him and starts crying. And she and she starts saying, "Jeremy, no, not Jeremy." Oi, what'd you say, woman? You think you hold it together? But what's Jeremy, what's Jeremy, I was betrothed to Jeremy. Well, it's fine, Danny, if you still want to carry it on. But we're trying to get some treasure here. Doesn't that make you a bit happier? She kind of looks at you, uh, scowling a little bit through her tears, and she doesn't say anything. Right. Well, um, there, there, and I kind of just pat her on the shoulder a little. <laughs> Typical man. <laughs> Give up, right, Thomas? Okay, now the chest there, I'm going to check it out. Okay, um, if you want to check it out, like, uh, that would be an investigation. Okay. From what you can tell, um, from your experiences, that you don't notice anything out of the ordinary in the chest. Is there a lock on it? There is a lock on it. So I can't open it. Hmm, hey Thomas, check, come check this out. Right. The name's Tommy, but yeah, I'll, I'll get you. And I'm gonna roll investigation. Well, you have to roll investigation because she already knows that the lock is there and has told you. Uh, well, I guess you can roll investigation to see if you notice anything different, I guess. No. No. Oh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my investigation is one and it's untrained, okay? Yes. <laughs> Alright, so it's locked and we're trying to get it unlocked? Yes. I guess you don't have lock picking for Rogue. No, I do. That'd be a sleight of hand, correct? Karma? One second. I want to double check to make sure I'm right because we're going to be doing Adventures League. I want to make sure I use the right one. I do have these tools, so whether it's these tools or sleight of hand, I got both I can Okay. Um, let's see, you have these tools and you're proficient with them. You can attempt to pick the lock and get to add your proficiency bonus to the dexterity check. Okie dokie. Nice. Yeah, 20. You easily pick the lock like it was child's play. I open up and I look inside. What do I see? You open up and you look inside, and there is um, some clothing, some rags, uh, a couple scarves, 
there is um, there is a note on top of these clothes. Okay, so I'm gonna reach in and um, I'm gonna grab like the note and the clothes, and I'm just gonna start pulling them out. I'm looking for anything valuable. Beyond some, the clothes that you are pulling out are kind of like of a noble standard, so not just rags per se, but um, you don't find nothing else of value within there, within the chest. Hi, you just look like some fine clothes right here, like you belong to a noble or something. I think these are you. And I start stuffing them in my. <laughs> what does the note say? How do I know? You think I know how to read? <laughs> You're the brainy one, so this thing you read it. Can I read it? You pick it up, and it's it's like you can you can tell how to pronounce these runes. As you're looking at the paper, it is kind of like a chanting kind of thing. And as you're as you're reading it, um, Selene kind of sniffles a little bit, and um, you can tell she's she's holding back a lot of um, tears and, and pain from from her from her ex dying there on, on the floor. Is now an ex, <laughs> now an ex person. But, is this a note hey, from so him? I feel but, bad. You all over here want to work tomorrow. I tell you what. Hold on one moment. I pull out one of the rags. One of the noble rags. <laughs> that will make you feel a little bit better. Whatever you know. You know but I you, um... A nice pair of cloth like that. That'll cheer you up in no time. Does for me all the time. You definitely hear, like... A chanting kind of noise. Coming from somewhere. Um... And the corpse down the hallway of her of her ex begins to twitch and turn, and his limbs snap as he comes alive. And it's basically like an upside down walking spider at this point as it comes towards you, and and begins to attack as he roars at at you. You need to roll an initiative? Yes. As Selene sees this going on, she screams. I'm not going to scream in your ear. She screams in, in horror. Make sure you uh, click your person. That's what I did. And then and initiative. And then the bottom left. Oh my gosh, it stinks. <laughs> I know how you feel, Mom. <laughs> That's normally about the first game. Like, Man, I didn't oh, do I'll anything. Tell you what, it seems like all I ever do is always get the nasty rolls. All right, it is Thomason's turn. Oi. What in the heck was that noise? Turn around and I say, Oi! That ain't what I tell ya! <laughs> nice sneak over here in between mom and the chest. <laughs> what did you do with my- Alright, chicken. As the arrow flies towards it, it just smacks it out of the air and roars at you. Holy crap. So it reaches out and grabs a hold of Selene as she screams and hits her for 12 damage from its claws. <gasps> as the, you hear people roaring and cheering from the, from the crowds above. Celest Celestine, it's your turn.
I'm going to use a firebolt. Nice, that is a... that is definitely a hit. At least when I hit with a firebolt, I hit good. Anything else? <laughs> Anything? So your firebolt unleashes onto the backwards man and hits him. So you got a quick firebolt to give me a damage. I have to click it again? No, no, no. no. You click the name of firebolt from the roll okay. you did. Okay. Oh, For geez. one mm -hmm. damage. Hey, don't worry, Mom. You've done the most damage so far. <laughs> but one's not a good enough damage. Every every little one counts. All right, Slinny's gonna go. Um, yeah, I haven't actually played an NPC from my side of the screen like, like this, so this is new for me. Um, so she reaches out and grabs a hold of the Kree creature as she chants her, her emblem from her goddess glows, and the creature screams in pain, and... Does six, does nine and six, so 15 damage to it. Oh, that's even better than what I did. Time is in to check out. All right. So as a bonus action, I'm going to disengage. Move there, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up in the corner and shoot it with my long or my. Shot. Okay. Let me explain disengage to her real quick. So if you take, if it's your turn, right, and you decide I'm going to just move my character over here, okay, and you move away, uh -huh. if you move away from a monster. It gets an attack roll on you. It gets like an advantage roll as you move away. Uh -huh. But you can take an action um, to disengage. If you disengage, it means you can move over to here and you don't get attacked. But it also means you don't get an attack roll. Unless, yep. uh -huh. unless, you, unless your character has some other circumstances that says as a bonus action you get this. Like me, I have cunning action, which, as a bonus action in combat, I can use dash, disengage, or hide. Yeah. So I get to use it as a bonus action and still move and attack. Right. But um, yeah. So I'm gonna shoot. I'm gonna shoot with my bow. So come on, Tickler. Let's see how we do. We've been tickled. He's not ticklish. He's not ticklish at all. <laughs> well then. <laughs> You just gotta find the right spot. <laughs> it's already. Well, that's my turn. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. So, the the uh, the backwards man. He looks over at Celestine and, and, and claws at her, but misses. All right, Celestine, it's your turn. Okay, let me see. Hmm. I got magic missiles I can do. I think I'm going to try that. Adam. What the heck? Magic missile... If I remember quite correctly, I don't know if it's 4 5 e but I think it's a guaranteed hit. So it just does 5 force damage. One second, I'm trying to get to open up for you.
All right, so the text for Magic Missile is, um, you create three glowing darts of magical force. Each dart hits a creature of your choice that you can see within range. A dart deals 1d4 plus 1 damage to its target. The darts all strike simultaneously, and you can direct, direct them to hit one creature or several creatures. So basically, you would get um, three darts to, sh to hit a creature. Okay, so there's only one creature, so I'm putting them all at him. Okay. So how would I do that? Just click it two more times, and it'll give us the damage. The same one? Yep. Yes. I don't I don't hit it by underneath. Right. No, no, no. Just the way you did the last time. Just hit magic missile on your okay. spell thing. Well. There you go. Okay. Yep. Okay. So bad. Also, all three. That's that's ten. That's twelve damage. Now, what you're going to do is on your character sheet. I'm going to change it to spells for you. You see um, your slots, four slots remaining. Four. You're going to put slots yeah. re slots remaining. You're going to change that four to a three. Three. Yeah. Like that. Yep, that's just like that. Okay. But the ones that are the can cantrip is a frost is a firebolt, ray of frost, and true strike, right? Yes, and you catch those catch those as much as you want. Okay, that's what I want to know. But I wanted this one because I just wanted to see if I could do more damage. Congratulations, you did more than one damage. <laughs> uh, it's nice having a smart alecky son. Ooh. Thank you, Mom. I think this is the first time you've ever called me smart. I said smart alec. <laughs> yeah, you said so, me and smart. <laughs> uh, so Lenny, she is going to use her turn to cast um, Cure Wounds on herself. Give herself six hit points of healing. And Thomasin, it's your turn. All right. Now let's see if we can find a sweet spot for that giggle. Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't hit nothing now, can I? <laughs> That's it for me. Backwards man tries to hit you again, Celestine, and Celestine, and uh, but misses again. Everything, my, my dice are broken too, but I guess that's good for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. All right, Celestine. If your dice are broken because mine's broken, then I'll take that. <laughs> that's okay. 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 So it's my turn, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's definitely another good solid hit of your firebolt. I hit him with another firebolt. Okay. So now in this spell you have to click the word firebolt for your attack, for your damage. Hello? Yeah, on this, on this spell you'll actually have to click the word firebolt at the bottom there okay. for your hit. Okay. There you go, it's for 7 damage. So your firebolt that's does seven. 7 damage. That's better than a one. Much better than one. So he grabs a hold of the monster on his shoulder. And again, the monster screams as her as her emblem on her necklace glows, and it does 15 necrotic damage. Okay. 
backwards man is not looking very good right now. That's because he's backwards. <laughs> Let's see if I can hit. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'd All give right. up a bow. I'd give up a short bow. Just throw your daggers. Get some poison on it. Throw some daggers. Vacuman turns and tries to slash Selene in the face with his claw and does. It's not getting off my screen. I can't see what damage is. Does five damage. All right, Celestine. That was five to me or you? To Solini. Okay. Obviously, magic is not doing it. Well, no, that's untrue. You're doing a lot of damage to it. Um, so you don't get a chance to see the monster's hit points, but I try to give clues by saying the monster's badly damaged, seriously wounded, stuff, you know, stuff like that. Okay. Your magic's working a lot better than my bow. <laughs> yeah, that one's a mess. <laughs> I was gonna say... I think that's a mess. I know. That number it's looks pretty familiar to me. It's the baddest one. <laughs> so he decides, decides to grab her mace and slam down on top of the backwards man for three damage. He looks very severely, very severely hurt. All right, Thomason. All right. I feel that this is my time. I'm going to lick my thumb, put it in the wind, get the windage, and I'm going to uh, attack with my bow. I feel like it's a good one. There you go. It's a critical. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> so go ahead, and, go ahead and hit your damage. So when you do a critical, it's going to give you two numbers. So basically, you get double damage. So six da damage. I told you I felt like it was a good shot. Which backward the backward range kind of just slumps to the ground with the arrow stuck in its throat. Well, Yay. good job, team. I knew you two would be good associates. As she's suddenly standing over the corpse, and you tell she's just torn up inside, and just crying. Over now, the the badly dismembered and full of arrows and burnt parts of her ex-fiance. <laughs> and I tell her it's okay because that was not. Your fiance. It was a creature. Would you like that as nappy now? She looks up at you and just and just nods as she understands. Right. Well this is awkward, but we got treasure to get. Yep, we need to find look for any doors in this in this room. Are there any Secret passages or anything? How can we? So can you I would take go ahead. Ten or twenty or whatever is called on the perception. Um, you can investigate the room, investigate certain areas, and roll for investigation. Oh, I have another perception. Perception <laughs> <laughs> is actually great for me. Investigation. Investigation. Yeah, you'd have to roll investigation, uh, like move somewhere on the wall and like actually look for investigation. Well, you don't have to move somewhere on the wall. Just say I'm I'm looking over here for any traps or any 
secret entrances or anything, and you don't actually stand in front of the wall. I'm going to look in this top left corner. Okay. All right, investigation. I feel like this one's going to be a good one. Maybe not. As you're looking through, you see where the dungeon master forgot to put part of the wall and left it open. And doesn't know she can see it on the wall, but she messed up on the map. The <laughs> wall looks a little funny over there, so let's say. I know, Garth. Yeah. That's why I looked over there. <laughs> I just saw that and I'm like, oh, nice. I forgot to put a piece of wall there. Uh, so did my guy find it? No, he didn't find anything. Well, he found the piece of wall, but I was just being silly. He doesn't find anything, though. Okay. Mom's about to move. <laughs> she moved. <laughs> <laughs> she always pings her character when she does it. At least we know she's moving. You're right. And if you're talking, we can't hear you, but you do not find anything as well. Okay. I I didn't say anything, but I said I'm going to investigate, and that was it. Then I hit the button. Hey, Selsang, I think maybe we need to check out that hall again, see if there's some trick to it. Maybe it needs a sacrifice or something. We can bring this dead body over here that we just killed. Took it down there and see how it does. Good idea. So I'm gonna reach down and gra grab the dead body that we just killed. <laughs> okay. Boy, I'll get some help over here. This thing's heavy. You got it. And we're gonna bring it all the way back over to this hallway with the breathing wall. I got the map, map now where I want it. All right, mind if you can come up here. Are you with all this. the way? Okay, you're all the way yeah. up there. Were you not the one helping me with the body? Yes. Hold on. Okay. All right. So um, I, I have it by the hands. I guess mom has it by the feet, and uh, we're gonna stand on either side of the door with the with the um, corpse in between. Roy, right. well, we're just gonna swing this on the count of three. All right, one, two, three, and just throw. Uh. And uh, see what see what happens. <laughs> You know, they always say it's going to take the players to, to like, come up with some other thing you didn't think about. <laughs> <laughs> so you throw the body, and it kind of it just sticks to the left side of the wall as it's just <laughs> stuck on the yeah. razor-sharp needles. Okay, with these needles, are they all the way to the floor? No, like, no, like, if you, like, lead, you're talking about if you could get under your knees, and you look. Yeah, uh, or, or combat crawl underneath, do you think? Low crawl. Is it? You can definitely tell that you could low crawl underneath these. Hey, Tony, eh? I think we should you try it. You think we could do something for Right. Here's the idea. We need you to get down and crawl on your belly down this hallway. Think you can do that for One second. 
I can hey, I can roll pers uh, persuasion, deception, whatever you want me to roll. Yeah, you, you have to, to roll. Really you have to roll a um a persuasion for that one. And I'm also looking something up. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She understands what you're. <laughs> you're a very persuasive person, as she takes off her scale mail, her her bulky armor, and crawls underneath the the spikes. About halfway down, she gets pricked a little bit here and there, and uh, but she makes it to their side, and she takes she does take a little bit of damage, like she's taken uh some some puncture wounds. Toy any. You there? You okay? That's right, you can't. I can't see. Hold on. Oh, okay. I thought was I was like, why can't you see? That's right. Celestine, you have the torch. You have to move up so you can see. Yeah. There you go. Oh, there she is. You're all right. <laughs> she kind of gives you a gruff smile, and you can't tell if she's flashing you um, a hello, a gang symbol, or something very crude. Right. I'll take that as a good thing. I'm going to turn to Celestine. All right. So here's how it goes. My new girlfriend just curled through there for me, and I think she's giving me the love voice. So I'm going to go ahead and call her. <laughs> and call her mind, okay? I think maybe this is fun. <laughs> and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get down on my belly and crawl as she did. Okay. So roll me a 1d20 three times. Oh, okay. So as you're crawling down underneath the thing, underneath this, the spikes, two little small spikes do nick you here and there. So you take um, two damage. It's all good, Celestine. All but right. Not I'm... much. Oh, I've been pretty worse. I'm going to get and crawl through now. Do I just stick my tune over on the other side? Yep, and roll. <laughs> so um, so the way you manually roll a dice is you... Um, I yell. Oh, you already know how? Slash, forward slash, roll, Yeah, bar. me and mom okay. do and then some training. base, on. 1d20. Yes. Oh, so being you have these flowing ropes, it's a little harder for you to crawl underneath everything, and you uh, take three damage. So what you're going to do is, is click on your token, and the bubble should open up, and where you have the red bubble, that's your health. The blue bubble is your armor class. So click on the red bubble. Okay. And you click on the red bubble, a window will open up above it. Just type in minus two and hit enter. Should explain to you that I know a little bit better. All I'm right. just crawling around like that. Sorry, my love. There you go. I forgot when I went was gonna go through. I should have pulled my robes and stuff around me a little bit easy better, and then went through. Oh well. Right. Shall we continue? There's treasure again. Okay. 
I go, you go, who goes? Hugo. Hugo? <laughs> Hugo. 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 So as you come to the next room, there's another torch lit um, on the wall. So you can see a little bit in here as the light flickers. There is, um, on the north wall, there's three large barrels. On the south wall, is three mar marked, three matching barrels to the south. I only see one in the south part of the room. Uh, hold on. Mom has a torch. I can't see that far. I gotta get in. Oh, uh, okay. There you go. And in the center of the room are three very large levers. There's a bronze, a silver, and a bronze. Hey, Eek. come on, Stan. What do you think these are? Sounds a little weird to me, if you ask. I'm gonna roll my dreaded investigation <laughs> to see <laughs> if I can figure this. Nope. Yeah. No idea. You can definitely tell that the the levers are movable, though. Well, well, from a professional standpoint, I can tell you, it seems like these levers do work. Hmm. Maybe I can do an investigation and see. Oh, jeez, it didn't even do any better. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I can tell you, in my personal experience, as a professional purveyor of treasures, silver's always the way to go. And I'm going to pull the silver, <laughs> silver one. You pull the silver one, and as you do, um, on the wall to the far left, there is a panel that comes open with another lever inside of it. I'm willing to bet that we gotta pull that one now. Tell us, eh? You want to do the pleasures? Who? Me? You. Yeah. Seriously, I'm talking to you. Okay, so I walk over there and I pull that lever. So you pull the lever, you hear a click, and the barrel behind Selene opens up as two ghastly hands reach out and grab her as she screams. And she gets ripped into the into the barrel. Right. I think maybe uh, we should go back the other way. That doesn't look too well. <laughs> what do you think, Celestine? I think we should try another lever. And get ripped up like her? Are you kidding me? You must be mad. Well, I don't see any other way around out here. We got to get out of here some way, and we can't go back the way we came. Okay. Okay, okay. I tell you what. Walk with me, and I'm going to walk up to the to that, to that cab, that cab she just got into. And uh, you hold on to me, make sure whatever it is that's in there ain't going to grab me. And I'll check, uh, I'll take a look at that. Um... That cave right there and see what's up there. Alright. Go. I know mom's getting ready to move because she pinged herself. <laughs> <laughs> so I keep seeing a green pig too, so once in a while I see a green pig. <laughs> so, the green ping uh, is me. <laughs> With my mom holding on to me, I'm going to cry to investigate this stupid cat. You look, you walk up to the barrel, and you can see inside. And it's bone dry. There's nothing inside of it at all. Like, nothing was ever there. Toy in weird. Are you in there? That's weird. You hear nothing back. All 
right. You know what I was saying? Maybe your idea is right. Let's just hit both of these other bronze ones. I'll take this far one. Then I'll take the other one then. Sure. Don't let those boogeymen get you. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna pull my lever. And I'm gonna pull mine. As you do in both of them, you see a, another panel open up with a different lever this time. Alright. Tell us, then. Come over here with me by this lever. And uh, we're going to. Uh, we'll stand over here while we pull it. That way, uh, none of those ghost hand thingies can get, grab us. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it. Let's <laughs> see what happens. You pull it and nothing really happens. And then the torch kind of flickers a little bit. Next thing you know is there's a um, a dark figure of a man standing next to you. Holy shit, Batman. <laughs> Everyone roll for initiative. Alright. Speedy Gonzalez. Celestine, check out. Oh, jeez. <laughs> this is a guy in black. Okay. He is made of shadows. Shadows. Okay. I hit a ray of frost. All right, roll for damage for me. Eight. As a frost comes from your hand, extended hand, it hits the uh, the shadow, and you can tell it actually like it doesn't it doesn't pass through him. It actually hits him like he's solid. It does eight damage. Cool. Thomas in it, check out. Right. Now, so this here, in natural, I can tell you that much. So I'm going to be taking my sword, my bloody sword, and uh, I'm going to try to take this thing down. Right. Uh, I'll try next time. You hear voices like it's trying to like open his mouth and talk to you, but it just sounds like as it reaches his hands out to you. Um, um, it, it's it's going to drain, kind of like you feel like the strength is drained from your body. You take 17 damage, but you also feel like you're a little weaker. And that's a Thomason. Yeah. Celestine? I'm feeling so good here, Celestine. So it didn't do so well to you, Tom. Me. No, I got five health. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's my turn again, so. <laughs> yes. Your ray of frost, your ray of frost kind of just misses wildly. Maybe fire a little bit. He's a shadow. All right. All um, right, Thomason. So I'm going to use my bonus action for fast hands. I get to use an item. Okay. I'm going to light a torch for myself, and um, I'm going to attempt to swing my torch and hit him. Okay. 
uh, basically you would do um, you'd roll a uh, 1d20 just like you're trying to make an attack do I add anything not really not for that not not for you trying to do if you're just trying to uh, you kind of role playing a little more than you are just hitting with a sword The, the torch, it just bounces off of him, but it doesn't seem like it does very much to him. Goodbye, Celestine. It was nice knowing you. <laughs> As it grabs a hold of you and... Oh, everything went dark. <laughs> As it grabs a hold of you, it like disappears into the wall with you. Yeah, it's let. Do you, do you see my girlfriend here? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Celestine, all is quiet. You are the only one left in the room. It's all on you. I think she's thinking. Okay. I'm investigating the wall. It's a solid wall. Nothing there. Holy sh Um I'm gonna come over here and investigate the barrels. Okay, you, you walk into the barrels and you um you just pop the lid of one of them off. You just grab a hold of it, you just yank it off. Inside is nothing, it's it's bone dry. They're all nothing. She didn't say all, she said one. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you for time's sake that they're all empty. Alright. Okay, she said all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I realize it's eleven o'clock. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, I'm going to mess with the middle switch again. Oh wait, hold on, I gotta change the switches for you. Huh? One second, one second. There you go. So they're all pointing down here. So they're all pointing down. Yep, yeah, they're pointing down, down, down. Okay, I'm gonna come over here and move this one up. Oh, Karma, you are devious. I just realized. Alright, and a panel over here opens in the wall. I think I just realized it. <laughs> yep, you did. You just realized it. Uh oh. Well, you can't tell, tell you because that's spoiling. I pulled that one. As you pull it, out of this barrel next to you appears this, this womanly like specter as she grabs you holding the shoulders. And she dismembers your character. Uh oh. All right. So is that is that it? That's over. It as and as okay. and as you're dying, and you feel her hands grab a hold of your body, you remember up, down, down. I thought it was up, up, down, down. No, it's up, down, down. Oh. Uh, he was just repeating it. That. He was just repeating it over <laughs> and over again. Oh, okay. oh my gosh. Dan, I, I just remember that. that. That's what I remembered. I was like, oh, you're <laughs> I was like, oh. Nice. Okay. 
Cool. <laughs> well, we all died, then. Yes. <laughs> that was fun. Look okay. at so your character's not dead for Tuesday. This is totally something on the side, so don't worry about right, that. Right. So there you go. You played. <laughs> so there you go. You played your first five E rules, D and D. All I gotta say is Nuka and Cassie missed out on a fun time. Yep. Yep. Well, they got Tuesday. Yeah. Um, so the next one I'll tell you is a little bit more role play than Hack and Slash. This was very Hack and Slash. No, you don't have to. I mean, I'm, I'm getting better at role playing the more I try it. I used to really, really suck, but I'm getting better. <laughs> 